Hi guys, so this is a continuation of my minimalism and packing video. Last week I shared with you what I packed inside my suitcase, what I packed, why I packed it, the key principles that I followed when putting together my suitcase, and as you guys know, I hate a heavy suitcase, and the same principle goes for my carry-on luggage. I want to make sure that I everything I put in my suitcase and my carry-on luggage I'm actually going to use and I'm actually going to make the most out of the flight. Now for me, when I fly, it's great. I have no distractions. No one can email me, no one can call me, no one can text me. I want to treasure that time, whether that be meditating, whether that be reading a good book, doing some work, um, writing a journal or simply doing a list of things that I need to do and, and get organized for my trip ahead. I really believe that when you pack your suitcase and carry on luggage with a bit of thought and planning and preparation, your trip and your flight is so much more enjoyable and so much more comfortable. So I'm going to share with you the key things that I packed inside my carry on luggage and why. First of all, my Bose wireless noise cancelling headphones. I'm obsessed with these and you've seen me wear them in plenty of other videos. But the great thing about these is obviously not only does it cancel out the noise of the aeroplane, but it also means that I can focus and concentrate that much more, especially if I'm trying to work. But on top of this, I actually realized another benefit from my recent flight. I actually use these to help sleep. When I had them on, I couldn't hear people talking. I couldn't hear the sound of the engine or, you know, flight attendants going up and down with the food. I was able to actually get a much better quality sleep on the plane. These are quite expensive, but they've definitely been worthwhile investment. I use them pretty much every day and they're great for listening to meditational music. Second thing that I like to pack is either a beautiful scarf or a really nice warm jumper. A lot of the airplanes, they really crank up the air conditioning and it can get incredibly cold. And while sometimes they might give you a blanket, depending on what class you fly, it, they don't always have one. And to be honest, I actually like to have my own things that are close to my body. And I'm the type of person that to get a good night's sleep, I'm a snuggler. I like to bring the blanket up on top of me as far up as I can and really snuggle into a little cocoon to make sure I get a good night's sleep. So on my way back from, well, I should say whilst I was in Dubai, I bought this beautiful cashmere cardigan and I will put the link in the description box below because it's still available. And this was great because it's so warm, it's so comfortable, I can snuggle and I actually got some sleep on the way back to Sydney wearing this. And it was so warm and soft. The next thing I packed was my iPad. Now, I didn't actually end up using my iPad, but before I left, I made sure I downloaded the Qantas app for entertainment. So that if I did get bored or got sick of doing work or just couldn't sleep, I knew that I could watch movies or play games or watch documentaries, whatever I liked using that app. It was good to have that peace of mind knowing that I had that to lean on for entertainment if I got stuck. The next thing that I packed was a notebook and a pen. Now the notebook was great because I could, whilst I was on the plane, if I had any ideas or I needed to write a list of things that I needed to do or write a list of things that I couldn't forget, I could quickly grab it and write it in there. And I actually kept it in the basket in front of my um, seat so I could easily grab it if something suddenly came into my mind and I wanted to capture it before it disappeared or vanished. Then the, having a pen is incredibly important when you fly. I have this in my handbag and it amazes me the amount of people who don't fly with a pen and are wandering around customs asking to borrow a pen to complete a form. Most countries when you enter them or leave them you've got to complete a form. So save yourself some stress and time and embarrassment having to borrow a pen, particularly from a very busy flight attendant and carry one with you. The next thing that I packed was all my chargers and plenty of adapters. Whenever I fly, all the batteries on my laptop, on my phone, on my iPad, they all seem to run out simultaneously. And by having a charger for everything packed and also having plenty of adapters meant when I, you know, did a stopover or I landed at my destination, if I really needed to, particularly if it was urgent, I could quickly plug my phone in and quickly charge it enough to make a phone call to home to let my mum and dad know that I arrived safely. The next thing I packed was just my key capsule makeup kit. I don't like to fly with a lot of makeup. I like to give my skin some time to breathe and I smother it in with a lot of moisturizer before I take off. But I don't want to look gaunt and pale when I land, especially if there's been a lot of jet lag. I'm really sleep deprived, so I travel with just a little bit of makeup, normally a little bit of foundation, blush, mascara, and lip gloss, and that's enough to make me look human for arriving at my destination. 
And the final thing that I packed was a crossover handbag. Now I always rave about these and I have shared with you um, my favorite crossover bag, which is actually what I um, flew with on my attempted trip to London, which ended up being to Dubai. And this was great. It was the perfect size for fitting my passport, my phone, my wallet, and my pen. And that's all I really needed. I didn't really need to dive into my carry-on luggage too much. Also, one final point is I packed all my valuables in my carry-on luggage. If you haven't checked your insurance policy, I mean travel insurance policy, often your valuables aren't covered if they're in your suitcase. You must carry them with you. So storing my jewelry and my camera equipment went into my carry-on luggage and I didn't have to worry about it going missing with my other suitcase. A great crossover bag that I love to travel with is actually this Louis Vuitton. It's really classic and you can buy heaps of these secondhand from some great websites which I will put in the description link below. Now this particular bag is great because you can actually take off the crossover bag and it's got a nice gold strap similar to the Gucci one and you can just put it over here for when you arrive to your destination. It's a great everyday going out bag and it's very classic and normally if I travel with this particular one I like to travel with this carry-on um, overnight Louis Vuitton bag. Now, both of these can be bought secondhand, as I said, and I will link in the description box below, but it's a really nice way of, I think, traveling when you have matching um, suitcase and carry-on bags. It just looks really chic and elegant and quite sophisticated. However, this time I actually traveled with a wheelie suitcase simply because I had a lot of stuff to carry. I wanted it all grouped together. I wanted to be able to lock it away in that suitcase and it was just a wheel on one. It was super light and it was my pack light one which you've seen in my previous video. But on the note of packing, I did actually go wrong. I forgot to pack some underwear and a clean t-shirt. So when my luggage went missing and I was stuck in the same clothes for three days, I was really kicking myself and I had to head to the shops and buy not only new underwear and a new t-shirt, but also a new toothpaste, toothbrush and some deodorant. So I completely forgot to pack those, but I will know better for next time. Then to finish this video, I'm just going to quickly share with you a couple of things that I did to make my flight that little bit more enjoyable. I didn't pack any snacks. When I tend to pack snacks, I tend to pack unhealthy ones. And I like to actually use that flight as an option for intermittent fasting because I'm a big fan of that. The second thing that I did was I wore black. Now, I am the type of person that will either sit in something, drop something on me, spill something. And if you're wearing black, you can get away with it that much more. A few times I've traveled in white and I've come home looking so dirty or arriving in my destination absolutely filthy. So I try, I wore black on this flight. The final thing that I did was I wore clothes that couldn't be crushed so that when I arrived at my destination, whilst I may have looked tired, at least my clothes didn't look tired. They weren't crushed and crumpled and looking. Another thing that I did was I actually wore slip-on sneakers. So when I got to my seat, I could quickly slip them off and curl up and get comfortable. And then when I needed to go to the bathroom, I could quickly put them on and not be too much of an inconvenience for the people around me. As always, I hope you like this video. If you're going on a trip, have a think about the way you pack and so that your flight can be that much more enjoyable and that much more comfortable and efficient. I hope that you're having a great week and I will see you next week on Money Monday. Ciao for now.